Darren Carter for the Premiership. The Premiership! A big welcome to Darren Carter for a very brand new feature here on Blues TV. Carter's Corner gives you a bite-sized preview of everything you need to know about the upcoming match featuring Blues TV pundit, former Blues midfielder Darren Carter. You're going to try and do this, Carter, in as short a time as possible, cram it full of stats, facts and figures. So let's get straight into it. Luton next up at St Andrews. Uh, no hiding away from it. We're in the tough of a, in the middle of a tough run at the moment. Off the back of that 3-2 defeat to Bournemouth last weekend, you can make a point that we've been the better team in the last four games, Preston, Coventry, Wickham, and we certainly deserve something from Bournemouth. Is that what you think Aitor Karanka will be dwelling on this week, telling these players that performances haven't been as bad as the results suggest? Yeah, I think when, whenever you're going through a bad run um, and you just can't find a win, um, it is important to focus on the positives. Um, and there has been a lot, as you mentioned. I think the, the performances are, have been good, especially Saturday uh, for large periods. But um, also then you have to zero in uh, on why you're not getting the points and getting the results. And I think it was clear to see uh, on Saturday, wasn't it, that it was lapses in concentration, um, getting sort of done on transition twice, on the counter-attack against a very good counter-attacking team. So it's just them little bits now of, of um, detail that they need to, to sharpen up on. Um, so, yeah, when you're going through a bad run, it is all about trying to pick the players up. You know, games are coming thick and fast. You can't feel sorry for yourself, that's for sure, um, especially the position now we find ourselves in. Um, so, yeah, you have to focus on the positives. Uh, keep believing. That's a big thing as well, belief. Um, you know, once you lose that, uh, you can really down, you know, down spiral. So, um, important that the players take confidence from a lot of the very good play that they showed on Saturday, um, but also now just zero in on, on keeping it, you know, the back door shut. Um, we're creating chances at the top end of the pitch, uh, but defensively have to be concentrated for, for 100% of the time. Yeah, you mentioned those chances, and I think in the first half in particular, we could have been two and three nil up after the first 35 minutes of the game. But some positive to emerge: Scott Hogan's fourth and fifth of the campaign, a poacher's finish, and a well-worked guided header as well from Ivan Sanchez's delivery. His work rates up there again as well off the ball. So did that go to show that a fit and firing Scott Hogan is a big threat in this division? Oh, without doubt, his his record shows you that his history of scoring goals shows you that. So, I think the big thing um, for for us as Blue supporters was that you know we can see that um, you can see that the work rate that he puts in, we just weren't really giving him much to go at. You know, we weren't creating a, a massive amount of chances in games for him to um, to try and find them goals. So, all of a sudden now at the top end of the pitch, we are doing that. You know, Sanchez and Bella provide excellent width and, and crosses into the box. Um, and you know you're giving him something to feed off. Um, and when you give goal scorers, you know, a number of chances, they're going to take them eventually. So um, it's no surprise that you'll you know you'll see Scott Hogan get, uh, grab goals and, and a brace here and there. You've just got to give him the service. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Blues looking for a first win at St Andrews since Huddersfield back in October now. So it has been a long time coming. The gaffer's spoken about it. Whether it's a mindset, the negativity around playing at home, he's trying to get rid of. Um, he's also said he misses the pressure that home fans put on you, not just the positivity of getting behind the players, but also that pressure of performing in front of them. Has the lack of fans at St Andrews had a, a bigger impact than even you expected this year? Yes, I think that is the, the ultimate answer. Um, we all know, obviously, the, the, the feel and the atmosphere that a pack St Andrews can, um, can bring the team. Uh, I've experienced it, you know, being a part of the fans and being on the pitch and experiencing it. So it does give you that extra push. Um, it is like a man advantage, as the old saying goes. And um, it puts away teams under a huge amount of pressure as well and, and can force them into mistakes, into turnovers. Um, and at the moment, obviously, they're, they're not having to deal with that. And, uh, and uh, like you say, Dale, I think it is a mindset. It really is. If you're in a rut, especially at home, and you're playing at a, a ground that you know, you're not getting results at, it can you know, become sub you know, subconsciously going into the game thinking, you know, how are we going to find a win here? So it's about gritting your teeth. You know, the home form table shows you that. You know, we're bottom. We need to, uh, you know, eradicate that now. We need to get wins on the board. Um, and that will give you confidence. You know, it breeds confidence. If you can win your home games, you always say it, um, put points on the board at home. You know, you can afford to go away then and pick up, you know, points here and there. Um, and it gives you that stability. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it's going to be a big ask, obviously, you know, to, to change that momentum, change that mindset. But um, one win can do that without a doubt. 
terms of team news, we're still waiting on news uh, in terms of Alan Halilovic's condition ahead of the game. Obviously, the Gaffer will provide an update in his pre-match press conference, uh, but hopeful that there's a, an otherwise clean bill of health going into the Luton game. Let's take a look at the opposition. Obviously, Nathan Jones' second spell in charge, currently six points above the bottom three. They're looking for their first win at St Andrews since 1986, so a long time coming. It's only six fixtures, mind, but... One win in 10 on the road for Luton. They haven't been great travellers this year, but are they outperforming expectations, Cart? Um, I think a little bit. I think people probably wouldn't have, have put them where they are at the minute. Um, I think they would have maybe had them in the bottom three and, and fighting it out. But um, they put together some really good results, you know, uh, beat some good teams. Uh, um, but mainly, as you say, at home. So uh, away from home, they're not great. I think they've scored, you know, lowest uh, six goals this season away from home. Um, so it tells you tells you something about them that they don't travel well. Um, but again, listen, you know, I think you know the, the mindset for them. They'll come to St Andrews, you know, confident that you know we're on a bad run there. Um, so you know, you've got to deal with that. Um, but also, no, listen, you know that the, they have a, a mentality thing away from home. So start on the front foot, um, try and gain that momentum, uh, and you know, and work on you know and, and press their weakness really, uh, which is their away form. A little bit of activity in the January transfer window for Luton. Tom Ince in on loan from Stoke City. Elijah Adebayo from Warsaw as well. That's because their one-all draw against Huddersfield last weekend, the 10th time Luton have managed to score just one goal in 27 fixtures this season. It is their main area of concern, as you say. 22 in the league this year. They failed to score on 12 occasions. James Collins, their main threat with seven goals, but the next top goal scorer on just two. So statistically, it suggests it's not going to be a goal fest. So you're expecting quite a tight affair on Saturday? Yeah, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. And, and as much as I'd love, you know, love Blues to, to come flying out the traps and, and, and take that real good attacking form from Saturday at Bournemouth, you know, into the, the game, um, we all know it, it never really works out like that, does it? When you're really searching for that win, um, it normally becomes a bit of a grind. But um, there's no reason why we can't, um, as I say, press on, on on Luton's weaknesses. You know, they're, they're vulnerable away from home. Um, as they have a real grit about us and, and have a real determination. That's what's going to get us results or start getting us results at St Andrews. Um, as you mentioned, they've, they've brought a couple in, you know, fresh faces. Tom Ince, we all know, you know, how, how good he can be. Um, so it gives them a little bit more of an attacking intent. Um, but yeah, I'm sure that, that I talk rank when the boys are on the training field, you know, these last few days, you know, as I say, nailing down them little details defensively, uh, but also just, you know, forcing and re re reforcing um, the the point that, you know, in the top end of the pitch now, we're looking a real, real threat. You know, we've got a goal scorer uh, that will put the ball into the net if we get him, you know, get into good areas. Um, so yeah, let's try and build that confidence and, um, you never know, you know, we might get a few goals at St Andrews. Uh, lots of praise for Kieran Dewsbury Hall this year among that Luton Town midfield. 22 years old, on loan from Leicester. He was man of the match against us in the reverse fixture. Very cultured left-footed midfielder, so he's particularly one to watch. But in terms of the, the, the new Blues boys, Raheem Harper, Sam Cosgrove and Jan Valerie, who will you be keeping your eye out on in the coming weeks? I like all three of them. You know, they're, they're obviously all different, uh, different types of players. You know, Cosgrove, I think, um, has been billed as, you know, maybe a younger version of, of Juki. Um, you know, he's got that sort of uh, build to him and, and his, his game style is pretty similar. Um, so, it'll be interesting to see how he develops. I think it's, you know, important that you allow him time to settle in, um, uh, you know, and get accustomed to, to things at St Andrews. Valerie, I think he's a very good player. I've liked him a lot. I um, think he can provide a lot. Um, for us, you know, whether you know Karanka decides to play him um, on that right side, or you know, I think he has played centrally at times. So, um, yeah, he can add a real quality, you know, to the squad. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think the the you know the the, the boys coming in, Raheem Harper, you know, I know um, quite well from you know he's obviously West Brom connections and speaking to our manager Jimmy Shan knows him very very well. Um, so, yeah, again, a midfielder that can you know has got legs, has got energy, has got quality. Um, so it's it's exciting to to see them three coming in there. I think they're very exciting signings, and hopefully, like you say, they can can hit the ground running and and fit into to what Karanka wants to do. Finally, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you for a match prediction, please, Cox. I've got a, I've got a good feeling, and I, I probably you know my my heart outweighs my head a lot of the time with Blues, but um, I'm I'm feeling a two one win. I think that um, the the St Andrews hoodoo, if you want to say, uh, will be lifted. You know, I just think that. You know the boys are playing very well. 
um, then eradicate them little you know details as I mentioned um, you know and I think it will be a tight game but uh, I see the three points uh, at last coming at St Andrews on Saturday. Sounds good to me, Cards. Uh, you can watch Blues versus Luton, of course, on Blues TV this Saturday. Just £10 pay-per-view, selected international broadcast. So it is available for UK subscribers. But for our international subscribers, head over to bcfc.com for more details on which country the game is available in. Commentary team of Ollie Klink and Jeff Kenner for this one. Darren Purse joins Hayden Atkins in the Blues TV studio from around 2.35 on Saturday. We hope you can join us. <laughs> that it should be a true blue born and bred who took them there.